Hello everyone. Welcome to Advanced Memory Class. In this class, I will teach you how you can improve your memory. This is class two in a series of six classes. <clears throat> we'll get started in about one minute. I'm waiting for students to arrive. This is an internet-based class where students arrive from all over the world. Hello, Mr. Kristoff. Hello, Simon. How are you? Good. It's been a while. Yes. <laughs> Your lessons is too late for me. <laughs> this is true, and they're getting later next week, so the weekend is the best I can offer you. Yes. Okay, welcome. I see we have Sabrina. Hello, Sabrina. Guys, you want to make sure that you're not muted. When you first join the class, you're automatically set to mute. Hello, Lorenzo. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, did you attend the first class? Uh, well, uh, last Friday I, I did. did. The second one was you. I've been uh, with Colingo for more than one week. No, the, it was the last class was uh, on Saturday, the same time as this class. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. The second one. Because this is class two of six. This is a memory course. It's important mm. that you have attended the previous class for this to make sense. Yeah. If you haven't attended, you're going to feel a little lost or behind. Um, okay. I, I can't go back and talk a lot about what we've done before, so you'll just have to follow along as best you can, and I do recommend watching the previous classes. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay, I awesome. That's great. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, and who else do we have? I see Victor joining us. Hi, Simon. Hi, Is Victor. It, uh, Sorry, buddy, you're breaking up. Is it a reboot classes? Reboot. What do you mean reboot? <laughs> it means <laughs> you teach uh, the first class again? Yes, so I've restarted the series. This is class two. Today we're going to focus on, well, we're going to summarize the last class, and I'll explain what the purpose of the lesson is shortly. So welcome, Victor. Good good morning to you. I guess it's midnight now, isn't it, or one o'clock in the morning? Yes, it's one o'clock. Okay, and Sabrina, is your microphone working now? Okay. So for anybody, if your microphone is not working, I would ask that you just go into the lobby and let students who do have a working microphone to come into the class. It's very important that you're able to participate in this class because you will be talking, you'll be memorizing, and if you're not able to communicate with me, we can't effectively have a class together. Miriam. Yes. Welcome back. Thanks. Uh, were you in my first memory class, or did you watch the no. lesson? In the first. Yes. Okay, so you weren't in the first. Marisol, were you in the first class? No, nope, Marisol's gone. And Fabiola. Hello, Fabiola. Hi, hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm good, thanks. Okay. Were you able to attend my first memory class, or did you watch the video? Well, I didn't watch the video that you are saying. Which one is? Uh, the first class that we taught oh, last God. Saturday. No, I didn't watch. 
Okay. Well, what we're going to do is, if you like this class, I would come to each one. And if you can't come to each one, uh, watch the video later because it's very important. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. Okay. I will watch that. Okay. Hi, Alan. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? Where are you from? I'm from Br Brazil. Well, welcome to class. I'm glad you could make it. Okay. All right. So just a quick summary. Who was in last class? <coughs> you, me. Uh, Lorenzo, do you have a list of the items, the 20 items that I had students <coughs> ask me? The list I did not have the, the list. Okay, so it's I don't know how to do this class then without somebody who has a list of those items. I can't really mm. do it. Hmm. Let me see if I save it. If you mm. have it, great. Otherwise, we'll probably just have a conversation class. I won't do the memory. <laughs> Let me see. Hmm. Mm. I did not save it because okay. I I enter late uh, last Saturday. That's fine. Okay, well we won't be able to do the memory class today, unfortunately, guys, because I don't have any students from the last class, um, and I don't have the ability to redo it. I might have to cancel a series. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe we'll restart it next week. I've got to think about this. So let's see. What can we talk about today? Okay, so I understand it is now summer in the southern part of the world in Brazil. What's what's the weather like there right now? Is it hot or is it starting to cool off a bit? It's hard to to say, uh, teacher, because Brazil is a big country, so you have different uh, weather's around the, the the country. But in Minas Gerais. Right now, it's really, really rough, hot. Yeah, the north would be very hot, I imagine. Most of the major cities, are they along the coast? Sorry? Most of the major cities, are they along the coast? Yes, yes. We have a lot of cities around the coast, but uh, Minas Gerais, Belo Horizonte, where I am, don't have sea. Okay. We are more at the middle, uh, far from the beach. Uh, do, do, you, do you go to the beach very often? <laughs> I try. <laughs> uh, when I have vac in vacation, I try to move into the beach in the the coast and take some days. Of I beach. try to go to the beach. Try to go to the. Beach. I try to try yes, to go. That's to the better. Beach. I I have a beach Thank close you. by. In America. No, in yes. Although I, let's see here. I'll open up Google Drive and. See, get a document here, just a class notes. And what I can show you is the beach. And I took this picture a couple of weeks ago. So let me just find, open up my photo album. Let's see here. Where do I have pictures of the beach? Oh, here we go. Okay, so insert. I got to insert an image here. <clears throat> and this is what my beach looked like last week. So if you guys want to open Google Drive and the Hangout Notes. Oh! <laughs> there. Is it your beach? Yeah. Really cold, man. 
Oh yeah, it's it's not like Brazil. Okay. So what you have to understand is here in Canada, it's winter, not summer. Yeah. And something really. strange happens to water in the winter up here. <laughs> That's true. Hi from Canada. Yeah. Fabiola, what happens in winter? What happens to water into winter? Oh, here it's hot too. True, but in Canada, what happens to water in winter? It water. Uh, sorry, I'm from Brazil. Right. So, what happens to water in Canada in winter? In winter, I think the water is um, freezing. I don't know how can I say congelar. Please help me. <laughs> right. So water freezes in winter. So it's very different from Brazil. Very cold. Yeah. So right now, like if I show you outside, you can see there's snow, but you can see a lot of it's melting. Yes. Uh, spring is coming. Oh yes, spring is here, or a spring is coming. So in March, all the snow melts, the ice melts. Okay. Teacher, what what problems is this? Uh, I live in Ontario. Ontario, okay. Yeah. The main city, Toronto. Your city? You're from Toronto. No, you 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 live in Toronto, main uh, city. No, no, I I don't. Okay. I but I, I'm not too far from it. Feature. Yeah. But here in Brazil and extremely south, we have uh, water freezing sometimes. When the weather becomes really really cold. Sometimes the the water freezes here to here as well. Yeah, in southern Brazil you have mountains, right? Yes. Yeah, and it gets very cold. But most Brazilians like it where it's hot. Yes, uh, daily we uh, how can I say we like when it's hot, but sometimes we like to discover new things new sensations so we go into the south to see uh, snow mm -hmm. some snow and feel these different sensations it is a very different sensation <laughs> yes <laughs> all right Christoph hello what's the weather like for you right now is it warm no, it's raining, and uh, next week will be snowing. Ooh. Uh, For me, it's six degrees right now. Uh, I have two, six degrees. Tomorrow it's going up to ten, but it's going to rain. But next week we have winter again. We'll no. be snowing, yes. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's sad, but this is the truth. You realize some of your weather gets, we send it your way, right? You get some of your weather from North America. Yes, we get from North America. You're welcome. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Renee, I see you in the lobby. We've, we've decided not to do a memory class today because we didn't have any students from last class. So, I'll figure out what to do next week. All right, and let's see, Lorenzo, what's the weather like where you are today? Sabrina's got 38. Mm, well, every day here is hot. <laughs> oh, yeah? It's more or less, let me see. I'm, the weather here is 29, 29 right now, 29 Celsius. Yeah, I think that's a nice temperature. I don't know what t that means. I'm familiar with Fahrenheit. Celsius to me doesn't make any sense. It's a silly uh, measurement. 
It's like a 90, 90 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, that's a little hot then. For yeah, example, my car, when I'm driving, it'll say it's 4.5 degrees. Well, I don't want fractions. Mm, four Just pounds? give me a number. Just give me four. Oh. Or is it five? Uh, okay, okay. Not 4.5 or 3.78. No, 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 no. Without, without decimal. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a round problem. number. A round number. Canada uh, is decimal. Uh, well, it's a German car, but yeah, they, a lot of times they use temperature. It's decimal, so 4.5, 3.5, mm. or 4. I, that's why I like Fahrenheit. It's very simple. So I know that 40 is cold, very cold. 50 is still cold, but 60, I can start wearing a windbreaker. It's not too cold outside. Mm. 70, we're starting to get into warmer weather. In the sun, 70 feels nice. It's crisp, but it's nice. You can have fires at night. 80 is nice and hot, but not too hot. You can play sports, go to the beach. Everything feels great. 90 starts to feel oppressive. Mm. Anything above 90 is not fun. Uh, teacher, how many days of the year is above 60 there in where you live? Um, about four, four months. Four months. Uh, yeah. About 50, about uh, 60. Yeah, four months. Mm. The, other, the other eight months... Very hot. Very cool. <laughs> uh, not very cold. I'll say three months are very cold. Um, so let's let's look at do a wiki and we'll take a look and find out what the weather is for this part of the country. Uh, I'll just pick Toronto because it's relatively close. Uh, weather. Climate. No, this is not a very good one. Okay, let's find another page that gives me better weather. Uh, go to the Weather Network. Canadian like you. All right, let me see. Okay, so. In January and February, the average temperature, um, oh, it's giving it to me in Fahrenheit, so I'll give it to you in Fahrenheit, or can I change between the two? Oh, here we go, metric. Okay, so in January and February, the average low is minus 11. The average high is minus 3. Oh, uh, okay. For two months, it doesn't go above zero. <laughs> Is it your summer? No, you tingling. That's not our summer. That's. Can you imagine having a summer where it's minus three as the high? Oh, <laughs> that's crazy. That's that's like uh, Antarctica. <laughs> okay. So in the north in hemisphere, when does summer start? I don't know. Maybe April. Maybe, because but no. No? June? Yes. June. It's because uh, here in Brazil, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, how could I say? Uh, in Brazil, it starts the, the, the winter in June. So it's the... the opposite. Opposite. The yeah, well, summer. you actually don't have a summer in Brazil. I don't. You have the dra rainy season and a dry season. <laughs> Your winter and summer are very similar. In the north, there's no difference between winter and summer. It's, is it the rainy season or the dry season? Yes, that's true. Or the, the season. <laughs> well, it, it's essentially in most tropical climates, you don't have seasons. You have the dry season and the rainy or wet season. 
temperatures really don't change much. Yes. Mm. Teacher, um, here this is a very small country. Um, have different different type of weather. Mm -hmm. uh, as I told you, uh, the average now is 29 degrees, but there's uh, certain cities that now is um, uh, in 10 or 8 degrees. No. Wow, very, that is quite a difference. Very, very cold. Very cold. Um, guys, I, I want to check with Renee to see if he has a list of the items that we memorized in the last class, because if he does, we might actually be able to have a memory class. What about if you have start today? Sorry? What about if we start today? Well, I, I don't have a lesson plan for that. Mm. That's the thing. I'm prepared for today's topic, and I don't want to have to restart everything I did last time. Mm. Okay. So if he nobody, has that... No, nobody saved the, the list. I don't know. Renee might have. Okay. Renee, do you have the first ten? Renee, and Renee was in the class. He might have it. Would somebody, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, hold on a minute. If somebody would like to let Renee in, we will be able to have a memory class. So if anybody doesn't have a microphone, if you want to leave and let Renee come in. Just a minute. Victor is leaving. Okay, so Renee, if you want to try and come on in. Yeah. Okay, Monsieur Rene. <laughs> Good evening, Rene. <laughs> they wanted to restart, and uh, there's so much work in last class, I wasn't able to do that. So, what we did last class is I had the students give me a word. So I said, Johnny, give me a word. Sabrina, give me a word. Liliana, give me a word. And I memorized it that quickly. So what I want to do now is I think Renee has some of the words. And what I want Renee to do is give me a number from 1 to 20. See if I still remember those words. So I'm not looking at the screen, so even if I do have them written down, I wouldn't be able to see them. Renee, can you give me a number from 1 to 20, please? Sure, sure. Let me think. Uh, 16. 16. Okay, so number 16, that would be cardboard. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give me another number. All right, 8. 8. Okay, number eight. Watch. Watch. Correct? Yes. And I number believe seven. somebody else had said clock earlier, and clock was 17. Yes. <laughs> okay, and you seven. said seven? Yes, yeah, seven. Okay, that was alien. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn around now. Because I could easily have those words on my screen, right? So, not impressive because, well, I could have made this up. You might be thinking, okay, where are we getting a lot of noise from? Okay, I'm going to have to mute you again because there's too much noise in the background. 
Okay, so how did I remember cardboard? Renee, you were in my last class. How do you think I remembered cardboard? That's a good question. I guess you went to your pegs. What's my peg for 16? 16 is dish. Dish. Okay. What's my peg word for number 8? Number 8 is ivy. Ivy. Peg word for 17? Tack. Peg word for number 7? Cow. Okay. What I want you guys to do is I want you to open the spreadsheet I have in Google Drive. Can everybody open the spreadsheet in Google Drive? You'll notice I have a number from 1 to 21. In column B, I have something called a phonetic. And in column C, I have a peg. So for me, dish, when I think of 16, I have dish in my mind. For number one, I have tie. So how did I remember cardboard? Well. I remember it a dish, but not like a plate, a small plate, but a satellite dish, a huge one. The one in Puerto Rico, Arecibo, it's over 100 meters across. Mm -hmm. And I imagine big boxes of cardboard in it. And there was a scientist yelling and screaming, it doesn't work, there's too much cardboard. So it was kind of a crazy thing, so I was able to remember cardboard. Well, my peg word for number eight is ivy. So I think of a large wall with ivy on it. And I have, oh no, sorry, uh, eight is B. Wait a minute. Let me just take a look here. I'm getting it mixed up. Ivy. I think I may have memorized it wrong. Renee, is it watch or is it bookmark for number eight? I, I, I write down watch. <laughs> okay, so number nine Maybe is I'm wrong. bookmark. Oh. Okay. So eight, my peg word, oh, I know why, because I'm looking at it. If you look at... I see why I'm confusing myself. I did this before. Um, eight is ivy, but if you look at eight, it's on row nine. That's why I'm getting confused. So yeah, eight is ivy, and what I picture is a huge wall of ivy with watches hanging from them. Huge watches. Why are there watches growing from ivy? For number 17, my peg word is tap. I imagine changing the work, the clock at work. This clock is always wrong, so I went to change it, and I yell in pain. And when I look at my hand, there's at least tacks in it from grabbing onto it. For number seven, my peg word is cow. And I picture this huge cow, and it's shouting as it shouts. Aliens are coming out of its mouth. Alan. Yes. Does that sound stupid or crazy? <laughs> a little crazy, but it uh, makes sense. Yes, and that's the whole point. It's supposed to be crazy. If it wasn't, I wouldn't remember it. Okay? So as you can see from this sheet here, I have a peg word for each number from 1 to 20. Okay? okay. I didn't stay <coughs> here at the last lesson, but I am understanding now we have one word to remember another. Yes. And let me explain it to you, and then we'll do another test. Just making a link with pegs, right? Yes. We're making links with pegs. So what I've done is I've got numbers 1 through 10, and we'll, let's, we'll look at number 1. What are the phonetic sounds for number 1? Fabiola. Sorry, teacher, but I'm so confused. I'm just watching the classes. 
Okay, well, if you're going to watch, you might just want to watch from the lobby, and then those who want can want to participate can. Yes, Lorenzo. I should participate. What is the phonetic for one? TD. Tie. Okay, so the TD sound, T, D, and TH. TH. What is my peg? Tie. Tie. Okay, so this word only has one value. It has the T sound, which equals one. That means the value for this word is one. Right? That's why I chose tie. So whenever I think, what is one, I go in my mind, oh, yes, it's tie. Mm -hmm. And here's what I did. For number one, Renee, it's teacher, right? Yes. Okay, so in my last class, the first student is sitting where Alan is, and I asked him for a word, and he says, I don't know teacher. So I said, okay, teacher's the word. Right, Renee? Yes. And so I pictured me wearing a nice suit with a tie, and I'm choking. I'm literally choking. I can't breathe because there's teachers hanging from my tie. <laughs> Picture it. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. What is number two? What is the phonetic sound for number two? N. 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 Okay. And what is the peg word? Noah. Noah. Okay. Everybody knows who Noah is, correct? Does anybody not know who Noah is? Yes, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Noah's Ark. Big boat, animals march into it. Oh. Okay. So Noah there's only Ark. one value here, n, which is 2. So I know that one equals 2. When I think of 2, I think of Noah. But you're thinking, yeah, teacher, you're full of it. Look, you forgot I-E in O-A-H. Ah, but I didn't. Look at column B in my spreadsheet. You'll see there's no vowels. Vowels don't have a value. Not all consonants have a value. In fact, for me, I don't even think of TH. I just worry about T and D. Well, that's not a D. Those are two Ts. There we go. What's the um, sound, phonetic sound for number three? M. And what's the uh, peg word? Ma. Ma. Yeah, ma as in mother. And that equals three because M is the only sound there. Number four. R. Uh, R. I. You see what I did? I dyslexia kicked in. Four R, and my peg word is rye. Correct. Correct. Number five is L and law. Six. Seven. Yeah, S H and C H, as in shoe. Show. Or show. So what I had to do, the first thing I had to do, as I talked about in the last class, is I had to use rote memory. Okay, so rote memory. Renee, can you tell me what rote memory is? Rote memory. <laughs> do you remember? Not okay. really the definition, but I guess was like... For example, um, when you want to remember one thing, oh yeah, 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 it's in my mind again. All right, you 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 need to remember one thing and then you link it to something that you remember. Yeah. So if I want to remember that one represents T and D, I got to think one T D T D T D T D one T D T D T D. One T, one T, one T, one T. It's repetition. You just keep saying it or rehearsing it until you have it memorized. It's not fancy. Okay? So once I know that one is T and D, then I go on and memorize my peg word, which is, in this case, tie. Now, tie is a whole lot easier to memorize because we all know what they are. We all have them. 
And because I know that 1 represents T or D, when I think, oh, T, um, how do I know which one's number 1? Well, I know the T is 1, and I automatically realize, oh, yes, it has to be 1. Okay? So that's what we call association. Tisher. Just a minute. Give me a second, please. So we have association. So right now we've done wrote, association, and now the last thing for teacher. What did I do? I linked them together using a crazy association. Bizarre. Painful. Ugly. Happy. Whatever is ridiculous. This is the whole idea of what we're going to do in the next four classes. So this is why it works. Forget about rote and associative. We talked about those before. What I want to explain to you is why this works and that there's a logic to it. Because if you understand that there is logic, then you realize it's teachable, which means you will be able to do this. Okay? But let's see okay. if it really works. Um, I'm going to face the wall here so that you know I can't be looking at the computer. And look, there's nothing written on my hands. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Renee, do you have a list of those items written down? Yes. Could you paste it in the chat so all the students can see? Okay. Give me a second. Okay. And again, you can see there's nothing written on the board. And I want somebody to yell out a number. Seven. Ah, uh, seven. That was already done. So seven uh, is alien. Eleven. 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 Um, Eleven. Well, that was Soso that came up with that one last <laughs> week, and that was Blackberry. I said, Soso, what kind yeah. of Blackberry? The phone or the food? And she said, the phone. Okay. Next number, please. Fifteen. Oh, dear. You're trying to get me there. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, what? Well, what's this? Is this a toothbrush in my pocket? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, just messing with you. Yeah. All right, another number. No, number one. 14. Well, you know, I always think of 14 as being lighter fluid because Renee tried to test me in my first course. But you're going, that's not what number 14 is. No, it isn't. It's window. And I asked, <laughs> when you said window, do you mean like software or do you mean a window in a house? We in the house. Yes. Next word. Or, or give me a word. Instead of a, a number, word. give me... Fax machine. Five. Fax machine. Fax machine, five. I said five, yes. Okay. Shakespeare. Oh, Shakespeare, that's number three. But uh, Shakespeare wasn't mm. said at first. It was first literature, then it was classical, and then Rene shouted out Shakespeare. <laughs> Okay. Sunglasses. Ah, that's uh, 12. Okay, right. Cup. M mug. Cup? Okay, well, mug and cup are right next to each other. That's 18 and 19, respectively. Mm -hmm. Eye drops. 20. Rene gave me that. He wanted to come up with something funny. We finished there. He <laughs> completed well, the list. Um, no, you haven't. You haven't said number four. Ah, uh, okay. will you tell me? Well, of course, Which I'll tell one? you. It's a bag and a bag of wood. Okay, okay. Number two, <laughs> somebody had yelled out number two, but you didn't say what it was. We kind of ignored it. But number two is cane, sugar cane. Sugar cane. Yeah. Bookmark. Yeah. Number nine, I did talk about that when I got confused between eight and nine. So, yeah, that's number nine. You also <laughs> didn't say number 10, which is skateboard. Okay, I'm going to turn around now. Do you want to hide everything on the screen so I don't see it? No, you already... Okay, I'm turning around now. Oh, yeah, they're right there. I can see them. 
You lied to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you can you make them scroll away? Everybody type something in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know them all. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want you guys to think I'm reading it, right? So here you go. Here's you can see nothing is written close. Look at my shirt. There's nothing written on my shirt. Nothing written down below. I don't have any notes anywhere. No, you are true. You are completely true. <laughs> Renee, do I have an awesome memory? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I have the worst memory around. I really do. I don't think so. No, but you see, I'm not... This is not my ability. This is a technique I've learned. Guys, all this is is a technique. So the hardest part for me was learning the phonetics. Okay? Phonetic, okay. But you, you, you create it or it's a rule? Okay, let me explain it. Uh, give me a number from 1 to 20 again. 19. Okay, so number 19 is tub, right? You can see it right on the, pay, the pegs that I've got on the spreadsheet. So what did I think of? Well, I pictured this huge tub and it was filled with cups. But I didn't see them, and I went to go sit down in the tub, and I cut my back from all these cups. I pictured the pain. I saw the blood. If you picture mm. it as real, you're not going to forget. So mm. this link must be crazy. It must be ridiculous. It must be painful. It must be happy, or it must be sad. Would any of you forget your wedding day? Or the day that no. somebody you loved passed away? No. no. The key to memorizing is taking a little bit of effort. It's taking a little bit of effort because if you do that, you won't forget it. Any uh, teacher, if we, if we make this kind of exercise uh, to memorize, we can memorize only words. No, that's the great thing. Uh, <laughs> Renee's been through all of my classes. The reason why we use numbers is I can remember things such as pi, which is 3.14159 uh, motor. And I can't remember some of the other words, but I know it's 979 over here. There's a 26... Five three five. I think that's very close to what pi is. Am I correct? Let me see. I know I've got a little bit wrong here. Uh, fourteen, fifteen, ninety-two, sixty-five, three six three five nine. Yeah. So I I got transposed two, but that's pretty good, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So how did I do that? Okay. Well, motor. Hey, Hold on. Motor. What is motor worth? What are the numbers assigned to motor? Can anybody tell me? What is the first? M, uh, 3. Okay, the next one? Uh, 1, T. 1, and R? R is 4. 3.14. The next word is tulip. Oh, this one's gone. Bye bye, pen. Ooh, I just it hit the modem. That's probably not smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tulip, we have a one again. The L is five. And the P is what? P nine. Uh, nine. nine nine three point one four one five nine. We can also use these words to memorize long numbers. That's in one of the last parts of the lesson. So here's what we can memorize. We can memorize long lists of unrelated items. Okay, and so for example, let's say for number five, which is law, 
I want to think of a shopping list. I don't want one item. I want five things. I want milk, bread, um, eggs, lettuce. Yeah. So in my mind, I think of a cop. You know, like one of those British ones with the bobby, the funny-looking hat. Okay, and all he's doing is moving his bobby like this. My first word is milk. All of a sudden, he's drowning in milk. It's crazy. Why is he drowning in milk? Well, because there was a flood, and it's milk instead of water. He's drowning in milk. Mm -hmm. And this huge loaf of bread comes by, and he jumps on the loaf of bread, and he's gasping for air, but he's alive. He's okay. This cop is drowned, drenched in milk on bread. And then all of a sudden, somebody starts throwing eggs at him, hitting him in the head. <laughs> and you look around like, who's throwing eggs at him? Well, it's a giant lettuce monster. <laughs> Crazy, right? Okay, let's cover up these words. Okay, what's the peg word for number five? Law. And what kind of law. log? Uh, what what is representing law? What image? The um, a cop. What kind of cop? British. British. One. Yeah. Okay. And what is he doing? He's uh, he's in he's in milk. He's in trouble. Yeah. Why is he in trouble? What's happening to him? He's in the milk. He's in milk. So there's our first item, milk. Does he survive? Yes, with a loaf yeah. of bread. Yes, and then what happens to him? Eggs are shot, shot by eggs. Who's shooting the eggs at him? A giant little, little monster. Look at that. You just remembered one, two, three, yes. four, five, six items. <laughs> Great. See how easy it is? Yes. Now, next class, if I ask you this, you're probably going to remember. <laughs> so now here's the important part. And I promise you this, if you make an effort to come to each class, what I did at the beginning with all those 20 items, you too will be able to do the same thing. It's great for shopping or if you want to make 20 bucks at a bar as a game. <laughs> it's up to you. But if you want to do this, I need you to come to my class one hour a week and I need you to spend one hour a week doing homework. Okay. Now, now your homework for this week is two things because you missed last class. The first thing, I want you to memorize all the pegs. You have to download the from Google Drive. Yeah, you can download it. You can copy it, whatever you like. The phonetic pegs are right there. I'll give you a link to the document. Yes, give us the link. Oh, look at this. Renee took the first class. Did you really make $50, Renee? Yeah. <laughs> so, is this the... My courses pay for themselves, don't they, Renee? <laughs> yes. I made $50 for Renee. Because nobody can believe it, but once I take you through the course, Renee, how easy is it for you to do it now? That's easy, really easy. Yeah. Renee has a bad memory too, don't you? <laughs> yes. I don't when remember I first... the difference right now between root and route. <laughs> well, now, the first time we did this, Renee, did you laugh and think, this is ridiculous, I don't believe it? What did you think? Yeah, I, I thought that you were... Uh, typing these things in your computer. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah turn around, look, and see, this is why I needed somebody who was from the previous class. It's hard for me to do this unless I have somebody who can speak to it, because Renee is actually helping me with the lesson. So your homework assignment is to memorize all the pegs and the phonetic sounds from 1 to 10. OK? If you just copy them from that chat, you can actually then put them in a spreadsheet and neaten them up. Because what will happen, 
at the beginning of next class, I'll spend about five or ten minutes to review things. We'll test my memory of the 20 items. Okay? Then what I'll do is I'll give you guys ten items. And here's my promise to you. If you do your homework, 90% of you will get it correct 90% of the time. And I'm going to tell you when you're not going to get it right. The only time you'll get it wrong is if you create a weak link. Okay? So next class, you're going to get to memorize. The class after that, you're going to have 20 items to memorize. But you've got to do the homework assignment. So let me see, do I have a list of the previous classes? Uh, these are the list of the classes from the first class that I taught. Uh, but if you go into the Kalinga website, I can't believe class is over already. You guys are a fun bunch of people. Uh, let's go to my name. OK, here we go. If you go to this link here, it'll show you all the classes that I've taught. And if you click See All, and you click on my name so it just shows my classes, then you can go back in time and you can look at all the classes. My memory class is every Saturday at the same time. And you just miss one class. And also what I'm going to do at the top, if you come back next week, whoever comes back, your name goes up at the top here. And we'll come up with your own peg words as well. So these are the peg words that I'm using. If you don't like any of them, that's fine. Come up with your own. But I'll warn you, this is done in English. Don't do this in your own language or it won't work. Hmm. This will help you learn English. It'll help you with your own language too. So if you speak Portuguese, what is the uh, Portuguese word for pineapple? Alan, what's a Portuguese word for pineapple? Pineapple? Can you type it? Or just apple? Abacaxi, apple, and maçã. Maçã. Okay, so you can still have the tie. Right? You can still have a tie. But I want you to be using English pegs. Okay, this will help. If you use Portuguese or Spanish, you're going to get confused in class. Once we're done with the course, if you want to do it in Portuguese or Spanish, knock your socks off, do whatever you like. But I had a class with Christoph, and he was using pegs that didn't work because they were in his own language. Okay. Right? That's a good point. Yeah, and after all, you're here to learn English, right? <laughs> of course. Okay. Teacher, teacher, uh, I'm trying to copy this phonetic and packs, but I can do it. Can you well, help me? I can't. If you can't copy things down, I can't help you. Uh, I click copy and try to co uh, paste in my spreadsheet, but it is not working. Well, then just type them out. You've got seven minutes. Just type them out. Okay. Um, or here's an idea. Go to Facebook, add me. Okay. And then I'll paste them in Facebook. Okay. Give me your, your Facebook. Well, what I'm going to do is different. I'm going to actually give you um, the, fa the Google Facebook group. You can add me here. That's the easiest it's, uh, way to do it. Uh, your group is Talk to America. But, yeah, here's the problem, though. It really shouldn't take you that long to write these down. I recommend writing them down. Write uh, down 1 to 0. Okay. Write down the do phonetics. It. Okay, let me do it. Yeah, and then write down the pegs. Now, for me, guys, I just use T and D. I forget T-H. 
when I started. Uh, for six is CH and SH. For seven, I just use hard C and hard K. I forget G because that's more I have to memorize. Once you've done this a few times, you'll want to add TH. You'll want to add G, but for now, you don't. Any questions? Uh, oh, this is going to be a great uh, class if we reach this goal. It, it's not hard, trust me. I mean, I did it and Renee did it, and if we can do it, anybody can. Teacher, uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, if you learn the, those, uh, those words, yeah. You can only link them with uh, with numbers. You Is have there... to link them with numbers, and I'll tell you why. Have you ever searched for something in Google and you get your answer right away? Yes. It's because they're indexed to a number. Mm. Okay. And when I you yelled out number five, I said fax machine because I knew that number five was fax machine. I could have given you number four and number six at the same time. The numbers give me order. If I know number five, I know what happened before and what happened after. Okay. So you see the importance of numbers. It's very important. I'm not giving you a way to memorize unrelated items. I'm giving you a way to memorize them, sort them, manipulate them. Do you remember when we went through all the items and then I d told you which ones I you hadn't called me on? Mm. Do you know how I did that? How? Renee, tell them. You know this. How was I able to remember that nobody mentioned number two? You related to, to another thing. Yeah, but what was that thing, Renee? If I want you to forget something or realize somebody already mentioned it, how do I do that? You fire, you put them fire or explode it or something. Yeah, I destroy them with fire or something. Or Thunder. I might just turn them red. So if I go back into my mind and I remembered seeing um, number five was fax machine, but it's now burning, oh, somebody already mentioned that. And if I want to know that it was, let's say, Renee who had mentioned fax machine, it wasn't, I would picture Renee putting it on fire. So you see, I'm adding more links to it to help me remember if I've done anything with it. It's endless the possibilities you can use. I'm teaching your mind to act like a computer. Okay. Uh, as you said, uh, like uh, an index with numbers, you mean? Yeah. But numbers are ugly. We have trouble remembering numbers, but it's easy to remember a story about a policeman drowning in milk that grabs onto a piece of bread who's then being hit in the head with large eggs from a monster creature made of lettuce. You won't forget that. So we're using the things we humans are good at, which is storytelling, and we're marrying it with numbers to give us order. And see, that's the problem with memory. Renee, you didn't remember the last numbers very well, but when I said it, did you go, oh yeah, that's right? Yes. So you hadn't forgotten it, had you? No, no. So in Renee's mind, he has literature, he has bookmark, he has glasses, sunglasses actually. They're all over the place in his mind. He doesn't know how to retrieve them. But using the system, he now knows how to retrieve them. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you structure. So if you guys promise me three things, you'll show up to the next classes. You'll do one hour of homework, and you'll memorize the items. I can guarantee you in three classes, you will be able to make $50 like Renee did. $50? <laughs> well, you'll be... 
I don't know if I'm teaching you the right thing here, but let's just put it this way. You'll surprise people just like I surprised you. Renee, what did your brother say when he lost fifty dollars? <laughs> oh, playing no. cards, you mean? No, no, with that system. Uh, it was, I was like, I can remember ten random items that you tell me, even in Spanish, because I, I was I finished the the course, so it was like, no, I don't believe you. I said, yeah, uh, I promise that I can. No, no, I can't. No. <laughs> okay, I bet you uh, it was six six hundred pesos, which equals like fifteen dollars. And I won. <laughs> did you, did you offer him the ability to double or nothing for twenty? <laughs> no, because I used twenty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was he yeah. shocked? Yes. I was like, how can you do that? <laughs> well, trust me, guys. In five classes, if you do this, and I promised Renee the same thing, and Renee came to each class, and look at this—he made money from it. Um, you can make money too. You can use it at work where you can remember and organize things better, which will get you more promotions, more money. Um, teacher. Yes. With these rules uh, or method, uh, what about uh, to remember a whole test in a book? Sure. It can 